China has an incredible advantage over the rest of the world when it comes to rare earth minerals. They produce the vast majority of rare earths used across the world. These are used in advancing technology and are needed more and more. A disruption in the supply of these materials would cause a massive problem for the development and expansion of that country. Could China actually cut off the US from its rare earth supply? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to cover what has been coming up here, China's rare earth threat. This made the news and I think it's important not just to look at this specifically, but also to give you everything you need to know about rare earth minerals. All the details of it are in this jam-packed video. I have so many different tabs open, you have no idea, but I just want to touch on all of these points, go through them as quick as I possibly can, and so let's begin. Again. Shares of rare earth miners skyrocket after Beijing threatens to cut off the minerals. You may have seen this in the news. Obviously, this is a huge issue because we have something that is so important, so critical, and yet China often is the major supplier of all of them. I'm going to get into the details of actually what's happening with the supply in a moment, but let's just focus on what's happening with China and the US. Shares of rare earth miners in the Asia Pacific surge on Wednesday. The moon came after a Chinese official recently cautioned that products made from rare earth minerals should not be used against the country's development. Now check this out. The comment is being taken as a veiled threat aimed at the US and its technology companies that are dependent on the minerals. So we have right here some very important news and obviously this was the talk of the town for a period of time when you have yes the rare earth miners are seeing the bonus of that in the short period but think about the repercussions of it. Suddenly, the US has to step back and think, wait a second, we've put too much reliance on what's happening with China and their supply of these to us. We have to rethink this. They could really use this. So will it be used as a bartering chip in the negotiations? Will there be tariff supply to these products? We're going to have to see. Beijing's threat to use its dominance of rare earths risks serious disruption to the US industry by starving manufacturers of components commonplace in everything from cars to dishwashers and also other equipment. It's stranglehold that might take years to break. Now you have to understand what's happening and I'll show you momentarily where the supply is largely coming from China but not exclusively. They're not the only one that has these and we'll talk more about that but I wanted to show you something here. This Bloomberg article gets into a very important point. China could wreak maximum havoc by squeezing supplies of the magnets and motors that use the elements. The impact on American industry could be quote devastating and this here tells you how serious it could get in a very short period of time whether the prices of them increase or whether they simply ban the export. There is no such thing as an automobile sold in the US or made in the US that doesn't have rare earth permanent magnet motors somewhere in its assembly. It would be a tremendous hit to the consumer appliance industry and the automotive industry. That means washing machines, vacuum cleaners, cars, the list is endless. The US Department of Defense has termed China's domination of the rare earth market as potentially dangerous given the offshoring of manufacturing and vulnerabilities in America's manufacturing and defense industrial base. So think about this on all levels. Okay, we're going to go through it all today. China produced about 78% of rare earths in 2018 and owns about 40% of global resources. The dominance of China is due to the fact that its government classified them as a strategic resource and has emphasized exploration and extraction of the raw materials for about 100 years. So clearly they were looking long term on this and have benefited from it as a result. And at the very bottom, this is what you need to know. There are 17 rare earth elements which are not actually rare, but refining them from ore is costly and results in pollution. So in China, they've got different rules. They've got different regulations that what you would see in some other places, let's say the US or Canada or what have you, where they can do things that they can't in certain other countries. So they've been exploiting that. And here we have nearly 80% of rare earths in 20 
2018 coming from one country. Now, that's not a normal issue in a day when things are just fine between two countries, but when things change and the chapters come to a close, you start to have tensions, you start to have concerns, and then you have what could be trade issues that escalate into something much, much worse. Now this is what began to fuel the speculation. There was a picture here of the Chinese president visiting a rare earth minerals production facility in China. And of course they started to think, well, this could be because he wants to know what they can do specifically in this trade battle that has been happening. So this is obviously speculation. We don't know. We don't know anything of what they're going to do yet because they haven't made that public. But there have been a lot of rumors surrounding it and because they have such a stranglehold around the rest of the world in this regard obviously they can pull the strings now when you look at this you have to understand they are not necessarily giving these rare earth minerals to places like the United States they get put into a product and then that product is then sold off it might be put into an electronic device and then the electronic device is then sold. So it's difficult to just say, okay, these rare earth minerals, we're going to, for example, ban them. You would have to ban all the products that they are put into. So it's very difficult to just put a big blanket over and, and try to do it that way. It's not going to work. They have to come up with a better strategy. This is where things get really hot and heavy. In a commentary headlined, United States don't underestimate China's ability to strike back, the official People's Daily noted in the United States uncomfortable dependence on rare earths from China. So when you have a publication like this, they're basically saying, look, this is the official statement, but we can't say it that way. So let's see how the public reacts to it. We're going to see how it actually plays out because this is very, very, interesting obviously they're going to pull out all the stops they're going to use everything that they can at their disposal just like the US would and this obviously is one very important point will rare earths become a counter weapon for China to hit back against the pressure the United States has put on for no reason at all the answer is no mystery Undoubtedly, the U.S. side wants to use the products made by China's exported rare earths to counter and suppress China's development. The Chinese people will never accept this. This is the Chinese Communist Party's own newspaper, so this is as official as it gets. We advise the U.S. side do not underestimate the Chinese side's ability to safeguard its development rights and interests. Don't say we didn't warn you! Exclamation point. I mean, they are pretty much getting getting out there shouting from the rooftops and this is something that goes beyond what we have seen before. The Mountain Pass mine in San Bernardino County, California is the only producer of rare earth elements in the US and its raw materials are refined in China. The mine was acquired out of bankruptcy in 2017 by an American consortium backed by China's company here. I just think that's very interesting the way it works. How they even have a stronghold in the US. I mean, it's powerful. It is clear what they have done here. They have a monopoly over this industry. Rare earths have already featured in the trade dispute. The Asian country raised tariffs to 25% from 10% on imports from America's sole producer. While the U.S. excluded the elements from its own list, prospective tariffs on roughly $300 billion worth of Chinese goods to be targeted in its next wave of measures. So that's something very important to note. There's more specific details in this. I'd like to move on and just show you some of the charts that are associated with all of this. About 80% of U.S. rare earth supplies come from China. So you can see the clear and obvious dominance that China has over the rest of the world when it comes to rare earth minerals. Largest exporters of rare earth metals to the U.S. In 2018, China was by far the largest exporter of the elements used in electronics, guidance systems, and wind turbines to the U.S. So that just shows you where they are getting it from. Clearly, overwhelmingly, it's coming from China more so than any others. Worldwide Rare Earth Mining 2018 largest producers of the elements by tonnage. Very clearly, right hand side, China 120,000. In second place, only has 20,000, and that is Australia. And in third, we have United States at 15,000. So they are producing. There is no doubt about that. They're one of the biggest producers, but in comparison to China, it is very, very small. 
Loosening grip, China dominates rare earth mining, but new projects are being assessed globally. And you could just see the different types here all the way from Canada, the US, couple in South America, in Africa as well, all across Eurasia, in Australia as well. So this happens to be going on all over the world. But you have to think about this. Yes, the United States, if they need some rare earths, they could pick up those products from other places. But it would be a very big change in order to just all of a sudden one day if they couldn't get it from China they couldn't just sign a deal and have it said and done this takes time okay because especially the new projects that are coming online it's gonna take time all of these mines may take years to come online and oftentimes they run into troubles along the way so don't expect things to change in an instant Sticky subject, magnets account for about a quarter of rare earth's consumption. At the very top, you can see magnetics there. Looks like about 25%. Petroleum cracking, you could see that is probably about 14% or so. Polishing powder, batteries, and so on. So all of that here in this Bloomberg chart. Rare, but everywhere. Rare earth elements have widespread uses in defense, energy, and technology. I just wanted to give you a list of all of the details here. You could see that for yourself. If you're interested, you can pause the video or check out the links in the description. Everything is there for you. Not so rare earths. China dominates global production and reserves of rare earths. I just wanted to give you a comparison here. Mine production as well as the reserves. Yes, very clearly, China is producing more so than all of the rest, but you can see the reserves for example brazil they're hanging on to a lot there so there's possibilities of expansion and new agreements that could be made between the two but at this time brazil isn't really producing much quite a huge difference from the united states from china and other countries as well so they're sitting on a lot unable to pull it out of the ground Last but not least, rare earth elements, the materials are found in a variety of high-tech devices such as mobile phones, windmills, and hybrid vehicles, just showing you the element and then the uses on the right-hand side, okay? So you could see everything that they need this for. It's not as if they can just do away with these at this time. So it is very important, all of these put together, depending on the industry, depending on the company, you could go in here and actually see which companies you think would be affected by it. Maybe it's one of the electric car companies, maybe it's some other but if they're in this reliance to pull these rare earths from China, well then they might have a problem. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, jam-packed, then you got to give me a thumbs up. Give me a like on this video to support me and this channel. I try to put everything you need to know about the rare earth situation that's happening between China and the US, as well as give you some background on rare earths themselves. Not enough people are talking about it, but of course they are so important. So you could support me with that just by hitting the like, throw a comment on here as well. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We have over 200,000 people on this channel and it's growing every day and I want to say hello and thank you to all of you. If you want the financial education that you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need from top to bottom A to Z. You can get the foundation history, the asset classes, how to protect yourself, all the details that you need to know in the link in the description. If you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. The economy is not doing well. I've got so many details in this video. Click on it and I will see you there.